We have yet another potential hurricane brewing in the Caribbean, as well as a strong cold front heading in the next week. And at the same time, we could have a hurricane making landfall. There could be a blizzard happening. So we got a lot going on. So let's break down the details for you in this update. Let's set the stage and how all this is going to play out. First, here is the satellite picture. So notice the remnants down here in the Gulf of Mexico. That is actually a leftover low pressure. That was Rafael down there into the Gulf of Mexico. And there's like a little stalled frontal boundary. And when you're mixing a stalled frontal boundary with a leftover low, we're getting some very isolated flooding rains in and around Louisiana, especially the Lafayette region. They've already had flood warnings down there. And that's going to bring a moisture surge inland today, bringing in heavy rainfall portions of Louisiana back into Mississippi. Here is a cool front that's swinging across from west to east. But notice down here, this is what could be hurricane or you know tropical storm sarah that could likely go into a hurricane if you look closely uh, uh, air force reconnaissance hurricane hunters are actually flying into the system right now and we could already have a little spin right there just west of jamaica so that's likely where they're going to be finding the closed low and possibly you know putting a path to this uh, the you know naming a potential tropical cyclone at the 4 p.m advisory uh, but what's going to happen is we're going to have high pressure that's basically been locked over the eastern seaboard. And in between this, we're going to have another high pressure building in after this cool front moves across. There's going to be another high pressure building in. But before that happens, we've got rain to talk about with that low pressure along the coastal regions. So some of this could lead to some flash flooding. And there's even a severe component to this as well. And yes, this could actually spin up some tropical tornadoes as well. That's definitely not out of the question. Down here into Louisiana, southern portions of Mississippi this afternoon, heavier rains would spread northward into Alabama, back into Tennessee, as well as into Kentucky. And I think that just continues to actually weaken, but shift further northeast heading into Thursday, because we'll have the low pressure highlighted over here. Here's the here's the high that's been dominating much of the East Coast where they're just kind of begging for rain up there. And there's the low pressure center forming down there into the Caribbean as we've got high pressure going to be building in. And that's what's going to be trapping the low, the low down there in the Caribbean for several days, pretty much all weekend, really into Monday of next week, because it's kind of gets trapped in between these two highs. So it's going to sit down there into the Caribbean in a very favorable environment. So as the rain progresses northeast, now we're talking lighter amounts, but definitely much needed rains moving back into the picture into Atlanta, places like they really haven't seen much since Helene, even the Carolinas. This actually could be your biggest rains that they've seen since Helene. And that's, you know, it's been a while, right? I mean, you've had five or six weeks of not much of anything. And, but definitely beneficial rains will move into Virginia. These are areas that are definitely bone dry into West Virginia. So definitely this is much needed. But notice what happens if it keeps moving northeast. It runs into that blocking high pressure. So I expect this to kind of fade and fizzle. And just as it you know, gets pushed into that sinking air, it's not going to be able to go too much further off to the northeast. But let's head further south because we are going to be looking at a, you know, another uh, storm, which would likely be Sarah, which would likely go into a, a hurricane. Because this, not only do they have the highest sea surface temperature anomalies, but they got the highest deep ocean content. I mean, right there, <laughs> essentially where Sarah would likely be forming. So much of the Caribbean is just a hotbed this time of year. And what's also concerning is most of the model intensities has this quickly ramping up. So once this becomes a storm, yeah, look at the hour time frame at the bottom of the screen here. That's 72 hours. That's three days from now. Most of the models are calling for a hurricane already three days from now and then some by day four and by day five could be looking at potential even a category two and even some take it much as a major hurricane so that's definitely 
not out of the question because it's in a very, very favorable environment. This is the sheer, look at that. Look at the green that's highlighted over much of the Caribbean. Yes, that is a very favorable environment. So it's got a lot of dynamics working for itself and in low steer steering current. So it's just gonna sit in that environment all weekend long, heading into even Monday. It's likely still gonna be down there in the Caribbean it's not until likely Tuesday and Wednesday once it reaches the Gulf, but look at all that shear that's happening in the Gulf. So it really depends on how much land interaction the Yucatan and how much time it actually spends over the Gulf and what the strength would be determined that the strength it will be by the time it hit potentially Florida. So if you're looking at some of the hurricane guidance, this is brand new, just updated, just came out. So yeah, this would take it, this is Monday afternoon. Notice where it's at. This is Jamaica, folks, that's the Caymans. Notice south of there, Like it just doesn't move anywhere, likely over several days once this forms, and this could likely still be a, a category two hurricane by the time we head into to Monday and down there into the Caribbean. So what happens after that? Right. So here are some of the main global ensemble guidances currently right now. Notice the UK met. That is the least bullish because this is the this is the frame that goes over the most of the land of the Yucatan. And as it comes back out, it would spend a lot more time over the open waters of the Gulf and be a lot more sheared. If we take a look at the Canadian, a little bit less, but notice the European and the GFS are the most bullish because it spends less time over land and barely clips the Yucatan, spending less time in the Gulf and makes it makes it a stronger system heading into Florida, which will likely be into central, possibly South Florida. So we got that going on. So by Monday, all the dynamics start to come together. So we've got this, this, this uh, little vorticity out ahead of the cold front. So this is Sarah still down there into the Caribbean. Here's your cold front that's coming in from the Pacific Northwest. There is another disturbance out ahead of it. So this is what's going to bring some more snow actually back in the picture of portions of New Mexico and more rain back into Texas, into Oklahoma as we head into say Sunday night, but especially into Monday. So by the time we head into Monday afternoon, most of this would be all rain down there in Texas, likely not severe. If, if there's any type of stronger, possibly severe storms, it's going to be closer to that low pressure in Oklahoma and portions of you know Kansas, Kansas getting up into Nebraska. But this is going to be a fairly progressive system. Yes, it's going to be a quick burst of rain, but this should move through during the day on Monday and be out of there on Tuesday, followed by that colder air that's coming in on the backside from the Northwest. So this is a big time cool down. We really haven't seen much cold air so far this fall, right? We've just been really mild. So yes, this is considered a stronger cold front from where we've been. That's technically not saying much because obviously we've been mild, but nonetheless, We've got 10 to 15, upwards to almost 20 degrees below average temperatures at times coming in for New Mexico, a good part of Colorado, and that will swing into the central part of the U.S. By the time we hit Wednesday, that's when there's a lot of moving parts happening. So obviously we'll be watching Sarah as it gets slingshotted and picked up in the jet stream with that shear happening. So this is the latest European putting it on shore close to Florida by then. And further off to the into the into the U.S. into the central U.S., we'll have that massive dip in the jet stream with that kind of horseshoe shape pulling in that colder air. So we could have some stronger thunderstorms on the leading edge back into Louisiana, Arkansas, portions of Louisiana heading into Wednesday, and then on the colder side of the colder side of the storm, we could have snow but some of this could even be a blizzard happening look at those tight isobars you know those winds are going to be cranking on the left side of that low so we're looking at some heavier snows unfolding through the dakotas good part of minnesota back into nebraska that could lead down into kansas as it pulls down that colder air look at that 540 line getting into texas they haven't seen that yet so you know that's going to be some colder air coming in and that goes all the way down to the coast so 
Yeah, well, again, we're talking 15, 20 degrees below average, typically what you would normally be for this time of year. So then you're definitely going to be feeling this this colder shot of, shot of air as we get into Wednesday, but especially into Thursday as that as the low down in Florida would likely be making landfall. But again, it's going to be moving across pretty fast. I'm expecting this system. Of course, it hasn't even formed yet, right? But it's likely going to be picked up and moved to the jet stream with those with a lot of shear happening likely going 20, 25 miles an hour by then. So this would be a week out. This is a long ways out, but most guidance has this quickly moving out over Florida and then back out into the open waters of the Atlantic and moving out to sea while we'd be watching that uh, snow continue to fly now into Minnesota, getting into Iowa, and there could be even some snow lingering in all the way down further south into uh, Oklahoma. And then there's the colder air by Friday. We'll have a kind of a reinforcing shot. Notice all the warm air gets trapped, right? So it's been pr plenty cold in, you know, Greenland has been plenty cold in Alaska. So that's basically what happens is you get blocking over the top. So it allows that cold air to get kind of trapped underneath. And Alaska warms up, Greenland warms up, and further south in the U.S., it cools down. So now it's pushing into the southeast. So once once, once uh, Sarah likely moves out, we'll have the cold air come in on the backside through the southeast and eventually actually heading into Florida by the time we head into Friday, going into the weekend on Saturday We'll have a we'll have that uh, the you know the colder air pushing into the Ohio Valley by then and eventually sneaking into portions of the east. So it's going to be at least a three to four day cool down with this colder pocket of air coming in from west to east. But more importantly, here is the wind swap. So this is the latest European. So obviously it depends on how much time it's going to spend. Over the Yucatan, we'll see how strong Sarah is once it reemerges back out into the into the uh, Caribbean, into the Gulf of Mexico. But notice this: the winds. This is every six hours, so that gives you an indication how fast it's moving in the Caribbean and how quickly it picks up speed into the Gulf of Mexico as it gets slingshotted across moving through florida pretty quickly it might be cross florida in about six to eight hours i mean it's going to be moving pretty quickly across the state and back out in the open waters while we could have in the middle part of the country where that low pressure center is from texas through the dakotas those winds could be cranking and then on the back side where the snow flying some of this could be classified as a blizzard. So here's the GFS kind of implying the same thing. It actually even spends less time over the Yucatan. And by that, it could be a stronger system pulling further south into Florida with less time over the Gulf of Mexico. So that's something we're going to be watching extremely close. But we are, in fact, anticipating the hurricane hunters to be putting the path on this storm by the time the four o'clock advisory rolls out. So if you do the math and put it all together over the next seven to 10 days, just kind of a blend of where this most of the precipitation would likely unfold. Yes, you got the Pacific Northwest that continues to be on the rainy side like it typically is this time of year. But further inland, all that kind of dries up over the Intermountain West. It picks back up again where that low pressure center forms over the Texas Panhandle moves through uh, Oklahoma, through the middle part of the country, through the Northern Plains. And then we'll have that second system combination of the low pressure center right now. And then we got Sarah coming in, which puts heavy rains obviously in Florida. But then before that, you got beneficial rains moving back into the Carolinas through West Virginia. And some of that eventually, <laughs> eventually head up into the Northeast where they desperately need the rain. Don't look at the amounts. This is kind of the blend, but this kind of gives you a guidance on where the potential snow would likely be in the path. We'll likely have a low pressure center setting up shop again across New Mexico. That would likely put a swath of snow through uh, Kansas, Nebraska, through Iowa, the Dakotas, through Minnesota, portions of Wisconsin. And then as this moves across, so we'll have a lot to break down over the coming days to keep you well out of the storm. and just want to kind of give you an overview of what's happening because there's a lot of moving parts. So definitely stay tuned to this channel where I protect you before and after the storm.